also with Drag Boss Garage. Welcome back to the channel for another informational episode. Just the other day, Izzy, my daughter, one of the boss sets, was asking me, Dad, she goes, what do you think is your most favorite engine part? Didn't take me long to say, you know what, it's the cylinder head. And she goes, why do you like those, Dad? I said, because that's where all the power comes from, or large majority of it. And she goes, okay, what about that other thing that sits on top of the engine? I'm like, what are you talking about? She goes, the carburetor thing goes on that. I said, the intake manifold. And she goes, yeah. I said, well, I like those too, but all they do is hold up the carburetor. And she looked at me like, what? And that came from Larry Morgan. That wasn't Tim's quote. But I decided to make a video on the Ford Motorsport Cleveland-based cylinder heads. There's a lot of confusion with what came out when, and I decided to make kind of a succinct bit video just to show you and tell you the information in an easy to understand format. I'm not sure when Ford Motorsport actually was started, but I can tell you that the Ford Motorsport heads started somewhere for the Cleveland base, started somewhere around 1982, we'll say. Anybody can correct me if I'm wrong. I, I have no problem with that. But in 1982, they came out with the A3 head. And they called that the phase one. I don't want to get caught up on the phases. I'll kind of just list them. You guys can comment about them, but they're really not important. After the A3 head came, the A4 head. <clears throat> then came the B3 head. Now they said the, the B3 head, at one time I read that it was a phase one and three quarter. But, well, look at, here's a picture right here of a B3 head that says phase one and a half. So you guys can comment about that. So after the B3 head came the C3 head. Not the Yates. Remember, we're talking Cleveland-based heads. The C3 head, I think, was followed by the C302, which came in two configurations. C302, which is somewhat machined, and then a D302, which was unmachined. After that, came the C302B. Now, according to what I've seen, the phase three was a C302. I don't know about the B. And like I said, don't get caught up on those phases. But after the C302B had was done, they may have made the tunnel port. Now, I don't know the exact date of the tunnel port. I didn't research that, but here's some pictures of it to kind of get you going and you can see what I'm talking about. These are from Jay Cushman. From the CO32B that was too hot for NASCAR, that's when the Yates heads came out. Yates came out in September 9th of 1991. So let's put this into perspective what we've talked about so far. The fastest man in NASCAR, Bill Elliott, awesome Bill from Dawsonville, set speed records with one of these type of cylinder heads close to 40 years ago. He went 212 miles an hour at Talladega and 210 miles an hour at Daytona. I'm not exactly sure what head he used. I think John Salvatera told me they were A3s. Comment on that. It's pretty impressive, Bill. It'd be nice to have you on Drag Boss Garage for a live chat. Or Ernie. Now, I'll just briefly mention the Yates and then we'll get back there and look at these cylinder heads. The Yates came out with a C3. They had a C3L which meant low, I think. Then they had a C3 high, or H, which had elevated ports. Then they had, I think, a C35, which was for power adder applications. Then they came out with the SC1, followed by the D3, totally changed, and then the FR9 came out. So that's just a brief history. We're gonna stick with the Cleveland-based cylinder heads. So here's a, this is actually a Boss 302, but the way that the motorsport heads evolved is from an iron four barrel Cleveland head. Now in the pro stock days, to get the most power out of them, you can, you've seen me make videos on this before where they transected this section of the exhaust port off and put on the aluminum plate, which effectively raised it and made a straighter exit. Picked up an easy 25 horsepower, but I bet you it was a lot more. 
And I'll put in a picture of the port of what it looked like and why they cut it off quick right here. Now, then they came out with the A3 head, the first motorsport aluminum head. Now, they all start out with either E2ZM or E3ZM. That's just one of Ford's numbers for, I guess, the date is E2, E3 would be 83. But there, I've seen Yates heads with the same part numbers. The 6090 is a prefix for a cylinder head, as is 6049. I know these are early A3 heads because they have 6090. And A3s had two bolt patterns. One was 2.77 inches from center to center, and the later ones were 2.98, as were the Yates and the C3 stuff. Now, as far as the intake ports go, the A3 was definitely a large intake port. I mean, you can see it right here. But when you compare it to the four-barrel intake, it's not as big. It's actually the same width from here to here as these are here. The difference is... This is more like a filled port, where you would fill this port up. And you can tell that by looking at this here, the distance between here and then here. And I'll show you a picture of the gasket on an A3 head, a Cleveland four barrel gasket on an A3 head. Check that out. Now, the A3 head also had the same Cleveland combustion chamber, this triangulated area here, they were made for either a Cleveland or a Windsor. If they're a Cleveland, you want the water coming through here because the Cleveland intake is dry, as you know. You put the plug in, obviously it goes in tight. You machine it to fit or whatever so it's flat. If you wanted a Windsor, then you had to drill out this part here, like this, and get it ready for a water outlet. Now, Ford made a water outlet for that, and I'll show you a picture here, along with CHI makes one now. On the deck surfaces of the A3, the pedestal's all built up here, stronger, for higher spring pressures all through here, as opposed to the Cleveland, which just has a round pedestal here. Now, I don't know about the dates on some of these cylinder heads. The, my cylinder heads only have dates from like 84 up. And you can see here, this A3 head is E2ZM6049, not the 6090, and that's 4.2 of 85. And that has a 2.98 exhaust bolt spacing. The A4s, if you look up in the corner, it says special, and there's a picture up here I'll put in. But his cylinder heads have so much work done. And you can see, they welded everywhere, all around here, all around in the here, around the spring seats. Now these are some better pictures of Jimmy Huff's A4 heads. Look at the combustion chamber. I don't know if they've been rounded or not, and what they look like from the original configuration. But the intake ports themselves almost look like A3 in regards to shape-wise. The exhaust ports are more maybe a Yates style or a C302. The ends all kind of look the same. That little water hole looks almost like a C302B. Got some nice rocker arms there. Now the next heads here are the B3s. Now they could be the B351. I'm not really sure. I'm just going by what I see in the pictures. They're phase 1.5. But they all kind of look the same externally. The big changes are in the ports themselves. There again, this combustion chamber looks to be more rounded compared to the stock Cleveland stuff. The ports appear to be a little bit more narrow and higher compared to the A3s. And there again, that almost square Yates style combustion chamber. We've seen these before. These heads went for $750. We've not really seen many of these style heads around. I guess they weren't that popular. But Dana Sniff has a set that he was trying to sell at one time. They all were Cleveland based. They all could use Cleveland valve train, guide plates, rocker arms, and valves. All the Cleveland based cylinder heads, A3, B3, C3, C302, they all used either a 2.15 to 2.19 intake or a 1.65 to 1.71 exhaust, depending on what application. Now we'll move on to the C3. Now I have a set of these, and if you look at it, you can already see a difference in the combustion chamber. 
These have the, obviously the Cleveland, like I said, triangulated area here and the quench. This is more rounded here. They also have a built up area right here. And you can see that. C302Bs have this also. These E3ZM 6049, 1121 of 84. So they came to me well before the C302B. This is the A3 exhaust port, round like you saw on the other high port head. Bolt spacing is 2.98. The date is a 124 of 85. Now here's another. This is the same C3 head. You're looking at the exhaust port. Now this one's dated 1026 of 84. Has the same 2.98 bolt spacing. But look at the exhaust ports. What does that look like to you? That almost looks like a Yates shape. Almost like a D or a square. So these are some unique changes that they must have brought through to the C302B and possibly even some of the Yates. Now, here's what I want to show you here in regards to the C3 versus the A3 heads. The C3 head, the intake port is right here versus the A3. Look how narrow that is. When you look at this in the, in the height, obviously this is going to be having a lot more velocity, maybe a little less flow, but it's going to have a lot more power in the lower RPMs compared to this. I'm looking at these pictures, they're also brought over to the C302. Now these are a set that Jimmy Huff had. Now look at the exhaust bolt shoulders. See how they're all equal length? C302Bs had that also in common. Now the combustion chamber here looks like it may have had some changes, but I don't know what they look like stock, so it's tough to say how much work has been done. Now here's a better view of the exhaust bolt shoulder boss. You can see they're all equal length. The ports are also round, so it's pretty cool to see this. Now the next heads are C302B. They also made them in a D302B, which were unmachined. But these were the ones that were too hot for NASCAR. They had extra material around the rocker pedestal for higher RPM and higher spring loads. They also had improved heat treating. The shoulder was added to the plug where the water outlet is to improve the strength there. Like I said, the outer bolt, bolt boss height was raised, so they're all equal. Cylinder had bolt lengths on the exhaust side. You know, they all used a Motorcraft AG series spark plug. These made up to 900 horsepower, I know from Darren Morgan, on less than 400 cubic inches. So I'd really like to get a set out there and see what they could do. It's an up close view of the combustion chamber. On the quench side, opposite of the spark plug, is actually a little raised there. You might not be able to see it here, but with a little work, they look like this. So these heads were the precursors to the Yates heads. And a few more pictures of the C302B heads. At the end of this video, I'll place all the literature that Ford Motorsport catalogs had so you can review all the specs that they listed in the catalogs and get some more details that I didn't provide. I got to give a big shout out to the boss at Izzy. She made that sign for me. She said, make sure you put that up on your video. I said, I will, girl. All right, guys. I'm glad you got to see this episode and stayed to the end. I really appreciate you guys being here. Hopefully I presented this in something that you can understand and get something from. The Ford's kind of confusing when it comes to part numbers. A lot of times they carry things on and the dates sometimes are not what you think, but I try to present something to you when you come to my channel <clears throat> that you're always seeing and learning something new at Drag Boss Garage. I try to carry that through with almost every video. So I appreciate you guys being here. Give me the like and please subscribe to the channel so I can keep building this channel and I'll bring you more videos and things you've never seen before. Stay tuned.